Hi everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. Today I'm going to start on my Bra 101 series because it's something that I had mentioned I wanted to do when I was talking about my plans for 2020 and now is as good a time as any. This video will focus on bra terminology, but future installments will include things like pattern selection, fabric selection, where to buy your bra making supplies, and more mini tutorials on things like moving straps or creating a long line bra. As new videos get added to the Bra 101 series, they will be included into the Bra 101 playlist. So whenever I start sewing something new like jeans or even a new pattern, my favorite part is just doing all the research. I love scouring the internet for information and resources so that I get to the point where I can construct the garment in my head before I've even started sewing. I understand that this might not be everyone's cup of tea, it can be a little overwhelming when you first start making a bra. There's lots of new terminologies, patterns, styles, fabrics, things that you might not have encountered in any other type of garment sewing. That's why I think a good place to start is looking at the anatomy or the terminology of a bra itself. First, we have the frame, or it's also called the cradle. In the most basic sense, this is going to be where the cups attach to the bra. This is also going to be where your wire would live if you're doing a wired bra. The frame or cradle can be comprised of one or more pieces. The Watson is a good example of a single piece frame. You can see that it is one piece of fabric that extends from side to side. The Berkeley bra from Orange Lingerie is an example of a two piece frame. You can see that there is a center line that runs down the very center front of this and that the two frame pieces are mirror images of themselves. At least in my bra making experience, the one I see most often, however, is a three piece frame where you have the center front, this is also called the bridge, and then two outer frame pieces. An example of this would be the black beauty bra. Now, just because a frame is a single piece or double piece, it still has a bridge. And a good rule of thumb is that for the most supportive bras, you wanna make sure that your bridge is a stable fabric to minimize any horizontal stretch. So if we're in a pattern like the Berkeley bra that has two pieces, I will use a piece of sheer cup lining just in the center front to make sure that bridge is stabilized in between the wires. One thing that my mother really likes to do is that she will take the bridge piece itself and make that a stable fabric and then make the outer cradle into a stretch fabric. That way she gets the stability and support she needs from the bridge, but a little bit more comfortability and ease of movement in the outer cradle. Just because a pattern says to use stable fabric all around the cradle doesn't necessarily mean you have to follow that to the T. You always have design options when you're making a bra for yourself. That's why we're doing it. Now you may be looking at your Victoria's Secret bra and saying, wait a second, mine doesn't have any fabric underneath the cups. And that's because this is a, another style of frame and that is called actually a frameless bra or sometimes referred to as a partial band. So when you have a partial band bra, the bridge is just that little piece of the material that connects the cup in the center front. Again, that should be stable, and it is in this bra. Now, a lot of times in this style bra, your cradle will continue all the way to the end of the bra. So this entire thing on the side of the cup is stretchy. You don't have any firm material in the frame portion here. A good example of a frameless or partial band bra is the Fenway bra from Orange Lingerie or the Sapphire bra from Pinup Girls. Next up, we have the band or wings. And this is the stretchy portion in the back of the bra. And that is because you want something that's going to allow expansion and contraction when you breathe. Now, I'm talking about stable and stretch material. As I mentioned, the bridge should be stable. The frame or the outer cradle can be stable or stretch, and the band should always be stretch. Now let's take a look at cups. So everybody I'm sure knows what the cup of a bra is and that is in basic terms, the material that's going to cover your actual breast. So we have a lot of options when it comes to fabric for our cups, but just know that the more stable, that is the less stretch that the fabric has, the better support and lift you're gonna see. Especially if you're a large busted woman, I would recommend using stable fabrics. Beverly Johnson had a really great demonstration in one of her craftsy classes, and she took a piece of stretch fabric and she put an orange in one. And you could see that the orange was slightly dipping down just a little bit, but it didn't make that big of a difference. Then she put a bowling ball in the same amount of stretch fabric, and you can guess what happens. The bowling ball falls dramatically. The same applies to your bras. 
If you're a large busted woman and you're trying to use a stretch fabric in a cup, you're not going to get the firm support and look that you're looking for. Everything's kind of just gonna fall down. So I would always recommend starting out with stable fabrics in your cups. Most home sewn bras are gonna have seamed cups. That is cups that are comprised of two, three, four or more pieces to create the finished look. If you're smaller like me, I could get away with a two piece cup. But if you have a larger bust, you have more curves, more shape you're trying to contour around, then you're better off sticking with something that has more pieces. This is a, a classic thing that you see a lot in ready to wear bras is that the larger the cup size will have more pieces included into it. I actually like a lot of seams in my cup. I think it gives a lot of shape and personality and style to the pattern, but the choice is yours. Now we have seen a couple of seamless bra patterns come out and these are what are typically called like a t-shirt bra, but again, they do have some limitations. If you're using a seamless bra, what you purchase is a preformed molded cup and they come in standard sizes. So you don't have any flexibility to be able to fit that cup specifically to your needs. The reason I don't tend to lean towards those sort of patterns is that I'm making bras because I have trouble fitting myself in ready to wear sizes. So a lot of times what makes a new pattern fun or interesting or exciting is the cup. That's where a lot of the pattern designers focus most of the detail and differences in their patterns. So one thing that you can do if you want to try a new pattern, but you don't want to start from ground zero again with fitting is that you can take a well fitting band cradle and bridge. If you have all of that working for you, you know exactly what you need. You can just drop the new cut pattern pieces into that and test it out. You already know that the band fits you. So this way you can focus all of your attention on the cups and how they fit. This is a great way to try out lots of new styles quickly without having to, you know, throw the baby out with bathwater. Now that we understand the different areas of the bra, let's take a look at some of the notions that are used in making a bra. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with straps. Straps can be made from elastic, like the Harriet bra, or they can be made of fabric, like the Bravo Bella bra, or a combination of both, like the Boylston bra from Orange Lingerie. When looking at the straps, the larger the bust, the wider the strap you're gonna wanna get. I like to stick around 12 millimeters or half of an inch. I find that's pretty comfortable for me, but larger bust sizes may find that three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters might be more comfortable for them. When you're looking at bra strap elastic, notice that it has some stretch to it, but it's not nearly as much stretch as the rest of the elastic used in the bra. When your bra fits you correctly, the straps aren't really doing a whole lot of work other than keeping the cup fabric upright. Most of the support is gonna be coming from the band fitting you well. Now I have seen some people ask, why do we need rings and sliders to make the strap adjustable if we're fitting this bra to ourselves? Even if you're fitting the bra to your custom measurements, I would still use rings and sliders because the elastic in the straps will inevitably degrade over time. There's no way to prevent this from happening. And that means that the strap will slowly get larger and larger and larger. Then you can use your rings and sliders to adjust the length of the straps down so that you can continue wearing your bra for a little while more. If you're using a bra that has fabric straps, where the strap is completely stable all the way across, you don't necessarily need that adjustability because it's stable. It's not going to stretch or move out of place over time. So next we come to wires. Wires can be made out of metal or sometimes plastic, but not very often. Even the metal wires have a wide range of flexibility. So this is a wire that came from bra builders and we can see that it stretches. It has a lot of movement, you can pull it in, pull it out, move it all around. And these are called flexi wires. A lot of women find these more comfortable, but I have found at least with my mother that uh, she has difficulty getting tacking of the bridge and the center front against her body using these flexible wires. This is sort of a standard wire and this one comes from Beware. You can see that it does spring out just a little bit right here, but I do have to put quite a bit of tension on there and it doesn't really move at all in this direction. These are my favorite types of wire to use. If you're a bigger busted woman, you might prefer a wire that is a little bit beefier and sturdier than even this. And there is the availability of extra strong wires. I've seen them popping up at a lot of shops, but I think originally they started with porcelain. 
I often read that women say that they would never wear an underwire bra because they think it's uncomfortable. If you've got your underwire properly fitted to you, you shouldn't be able to feel it at all. And that might be one of the reasons why you should be making a bra for yourself. So for instance, I alluded to the fact that I wear a different wire than my cup. So this is the wire that corresponds with my cup size. Um, in this case, this is a 36 wire. Now, this is the wire that fits my actual body, which is a 40 wire. You can see there's a big difference in here. So if I were to buy a bra that fits my cup size from a standard ready to wear shop, this is the wire that's going to be included in it. Of course, this is uncomfortable when this is what my body is shaped like. Just because a pattern designer recommends a specific wire size for a, a size in their pattern doesn't mean you have to use it. I always recommend fitting the wire to yourself first, then fitting the wire into the cradle, and finally fitting the cups into the cradle. You also might find that the wire might be too long. So it's always better to buy a wire that's too long because you can always trim it down to exactly what you need in the end. So say the 40 wire fits you perfectly, but it's a little bit high in the underarm. That is, it's poking you right up there. What you can do is just take it uh, some tin snips and cut it down to the size you think is the most comfortable. Then I like to cover the end with some shrink wrap tubing. It's really that simple to customize the wire to the exact length of your needs. Like I said, if you've done your job correctly and fitted everything, the wire shouldn't be felt at all. Well, I think that wraps this up for today. I know I've thrown a lot at you and I want to give you some time to digest it. Be sure to come back on our next installment where I talk about the different styles of patterns that are available. If you'd like to learn more about bra making, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon down below so that you can know whenever I upload a new video. And don't be shy, I have lots of videos already up talking about the wonderful world of bra making to get you by until the next one comes out. I'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.